Okay, here we go. Here's my ro uh, design on Onshape 3D printable rocket tutorial. Uh, this was the one I did for practice, and uh, uh, I have a website here pulled up with the size of that motor, so I'm going to build it around this size motor. It's an 18 millimeter diameter and a length of 2.75 inches. So here we go. I have titled it Jfield 3D Printed Rocket Design. You can put your own name on it. And uh, here, uh, this one's kind of fun. So I start with the top plane, sketch, center point circle. I click on the center, I drag out and I just drop it down. And then I grab my dimension tool. I come in here, I click on the circumference, I drop the dimension and now I can type in and I wanted that to be an 18. I tell it millimeters. See how it's defaulting to inches? This is a default model in inches, but if I tell it millimeters, it will put it in. And then uh, I'll use the offset tool to put in um, the actual body of my rocket. Uh, I can come in here, hit escape, and I can kind of slide this back and forth to get the uh, length like I want it. Just eyeballing it, but also I can scroll in here and double click on this and put in the dimension. In this case, I'm going to go for 0.1 inches. And I can see that that leaves a little bit of uh, width to the body of the rocket. Certainly this would be more uh, wider than a paper version, but I think that uh, you'll see when we get done that this is a uh, this is a fine choice. You can go with less, but it may be cause issues. So, um, I'm done with that sketch, and so I click accept, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my first extrude here, and I'm going to pick that. I want to uh, extrude the whole thing as solid right now, not hollow. I'll go and hollow some stuff later. Uh, I'm going to make this one seven inches long here, or, um, and... Um, that's just so I can get it into our smaller printer and print it all at one time. So that's why I chose that dimension. And so I type it in, accept. And now uh, I want to finish my nose cone. So I'm going to hit the front plane. I'm going to view that front plane. You can also do that by right clicking your mouse and say view normal at any time when you're working on a sketch. Zoom out, zoom in above it so I can get it more in the middle. And there we go. So I'm going to sketch. I'm going to sketch on the front plane, if I can get it picked here. All right. Uh, I think I already did. That was my bad. All right, so front plane sketch. I'm going to use the use tool because I want to use this line as a starting point for my nose cone. Uh, come in here and get the middle. Uh, it, so it clicks on the midline. And then I'll just come in here and uh, probably drop this almost at three inches. Hit escape. I don't need to do any more lines. So I'm going to hit escape, get out of that tool. And it is not working for me, but that's okay. I'll just come up here. What I really want is this spline tool. So I'm going to do the spline. I'm going to really, uh, I can do a three point spline, but I've realized I can actually do a simple two point spline. So if I just double click on that one, it'll, it'll finish. And I hit escape. I think maybe my escape is not working on my keyboard. Sorry, guys. So I am going to have to. Uh, I wonder what that means. Oh, here, if I right click, uh, I can escape it too that way. So for now, I'll, I'll do it that way. So I can uh, grab this and pull it out and make the continuity of the curve continuous at the body so there's no abrupt uh, edge on my rocket and that will create drag and I want to uh, eliminate drag and I'm also going to pull this one out a little bit and um, pull this arrow back a little bit a very sharp bulleted tip there so that'll work for me um, now, uh, before I do a revolve of this and finish it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about making the offset that you will need for the separate nose cone piece. And uh, right now, what I'm going to do is come to this line and put a uh, lip on it like this. I'm just going to 
rough this in and uh, hit it right click escape line tool and then I'm gonna uh, measure the distance from that point to that point and I'm gonna make it point one inches I just hit enter and uh, I could do uh, a little bit better here since I'm still in the sketch under the uh, um, I'll make that one point one as well just to even things out and why not put a dimension on here of point three and I probably my guess is I may want to increase that to point five to have that nose cone sit in there that much and then one little trick I'm going to do here is additionally is trim out um if it, here it is sorry trim out that my scissors and now i should have a complete sketch profile that i want to revolve so next tool is going to next to the extrude i do the revolve tool i select on my profile i select on this vertical axis as the thing to rotate about and this is important kids and that is make sure you select new because I want that to be a separate 3D printed part in this case. So it pops off at the end and my parachute comes out and it comes safely back to earth so I can put it on my mantle and love it for years to come. <laughs> okay. Uh, you see the two different colors and you see the two different bodies over here on the left. Uh, okay, so time to make the fins. I'm going to go ahead and select on this, sketch on it hit the front plane and I just kind of do a spline tool I kind of just try and have fun with it um, is all I really did and I think I kind of here actually escape out of here let me go look at this fin that I did yeah I think I drop a point there and then I pull it up to there and then there's a point here and then it comes down when I'm making this spine so let's try that again and then I double click to end it I'm going to scroll out. I think I made that too big. I think I did that the first time I did this too, but that's okay. I'll just keep going. And I'm going to go, just as long as I make sure my point is somewhere inside the rocket, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and put the, close this section off and you'll see it shade it. And now it's an editable surface. Um, and I'm going to go back, view this, and hit us. I'm going to have to right click for mine, hit escape, and then come over here. I'm going to move these inboard a little bit. There it is. It's almost like a wing. Some really quick sketch manipulation is what you're seeing me do here. And I may come out a little bit more with this bird here. Wing thing. Let me scroll out. Now, to me, that still looks a little bit big for this overall rocket. What will that do to my aerodynamics I'm not really sure so I might pull this down just a little more like that okay there we go okay I spent a little time trying to get the details right when I design stuff and it pays off later um, giving you something that you're more pleased with now I'm done with that so I'm going to go back and extrude in this case this out uh, in uh, this case though I want symmetry I want them to go the equal directions I'm going to scroll this back I don't want these to be very thin at all 
since I can 3D print them in all, you know pretty thin thicknesses, uh, I'm gonna dare to go to uh, a point uh, uh, seven five maybe. Let's try that. I'm sorry, that was supposed to be a point zero seven five inch. Click off of it, and yeah, that's pretty skinny, but we can probably get away with it. So I'm going to accept that, and uh, in this case, I also have to make sure it's a new part, and you'll see it put another model body down here as part three and change the color, and I have to do that uh, in this case because I want to make a pattern of these. So I'm going to do a circular pattern of that part, and it says, what do you want to be the axis of rotation? In this case, that sketch that I created, sketch two here, I'm going to click the eyeball on so I can get the pick that vertical line that I already built. There you go. It defaults to four of them. I could dare to do nine of them, show you what that looks like. It's really pretty cool. But uh, in this case, uh, I did three. Uh, they rotate 360 degrees by default. You can change that. And I accept that. And now I actually want to put those back uh, as part of the rocket body. I don't want to print them as separate parts uh, because the 3D printer gives us that functionality anyway. So I'm going to Boolean operation and union this one, this one, this one, and the rocket body. And say accept. Now I'm back down on my two parts. Uh, one of the other thing, little details that I did was uh, chamfer this edge uh, to get a little bit of more aerodynamic look at the tail. And in this case, uh, I did uh, say 0.05 or uh, since it's a 0.1 inch thick walnut uh, after we cut out for the motor. So, and then uh, I did a distance and an angle instead of e two equal distance. That's two equal distance chamfer here where you just cut it at a 45. Uh, distance and an angle. And then I'm going to change the direction of the distance and an angle. I have to usually do that because it defaults to the wrong direction. And then I can say like 80 degrees. Now, uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, you see it tapers that up real nice. Uh, makes that more aerodynamic. I'm going to dare to go 85, so it's closer to where my, yeah, there we go. A uh, little trick, I kind of was going and I forgot to do something. So I'm going to come over here to my uh, parametric modeling tree, and I'm going to slide up the history to right before I did the circular pattern, because I'm going to add the aerodynamic chamfer edge here. And you'll see if I just go to the, sorry, fillet, um, not the chamfer. The chamfer is the square cut. Uh, the fillet's the rounded cut. And I clicked on that edge. I'm going to dare to click on this edge too. And it's actually putting one in there at 0.07. You may click on yours and it defaults to 0.2 and it, and it fails. But you can always uh, lower that down. Uh, type in a different number. I'm, I'm really quite pleased with that. 